All right. Welcome, everyone. Uh, my name is Kalpan. Uh, I'm part of AWS's partner ecosystem team, uh, primarily managing our migration tooling ecosystem, working with our ISV partners. Um, Andy, do you want to introduce yourself? Turn on the mic. Yeah, I'm Andy Ferner. Uh, I work very closely with Calpan on our migrations programs, and I lead the partner migration program for AWS, the global partner migration program. And uh, quickly, uh, going through the agenda today, um, Andy will, will start with uh, talking about what's the, what's the market opportunity uh, for migrations worldwide. Um, he will also talk about one of our customer migration program called MAP, um, and also partner program called Migration Competency Program. Um, and then I will start talking about what's the AWS migration tooling ecosystem, uh, what's the tool chain there, and I will talk a whole lot about uh, customer success stories from our partners uh, who have been working um, uh, primarily this year and, and earlier uh, to help our customers migrate um, effectively. And then at the end, we'll summarize um, and do the Q&A. Over to you, Andy. OK, thank you. Which is the up and down button? This one. Oh, good. The big green one there. So, yes. Yeah. Um, so yeah, good, good afternoon. And thanks for taking the time to come into this session. As I said, my name is uh, Andy Ferner, and I lead the global program that AWS has to support partners um, as they work with our joint customers on migrating over to AWS. So the way I explain my role, it's all things migrations when we come to working with partners. And then it's all things partners when we come to working with the various AWS teams who are engaging with our customers on their um, migrations. Um, the main focus of this session is Calpan session, talking about tooling and automation, which is critical to migrations. But what we wanted to do the first um, five or 10 minutes, we just wanted to give a context in terms of the opportunity we are seeing in the marketplace, and hopefully you are uh, as well, and the programs and support that we have in place to work with you as you work uh, with your customers, migrating them over to AWS. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is the market opportunity as we see it. Actually, just out of interest before I go ahead, um, how many people in this room are with technology partners as opposed to, okay, and how many are with consulting or systems integration? partners. Okay, it's about 50-50. And those of you who didn't put your hands up, what are you? What are you? No, I was, we won't go there. So yeah, it's about 50-50. Good. Okay, let's talk about the market opportunities we see it, and hopefully you're seeing the, um, the same thing. Um, I used these slides last year at reInvent, and I've reused them um, without any apologies, because the key messages on this slide um, are still very applicable today, in fact, more so, because if anything, the migrations to AWS has, has accelerated o over the last year. But if we look at the marketplace, there's a number of key themes that we see happening. The first is um, that the public cloud is now becoming a strategic imperative for all organizations, including and up to the major enterprises. Um, when, I, when I joined AWS uh, just, oh, just about three years ago, a lot of enterprises were looking at this new thing called the public cloud, and they were questioning whether or if it was something that they wanted to investigate uh, and move to. Over the last two or three years, and definitely in the last 18 months, that question has changed dramatically. It's not now a case of if we should move to the cloud, it's how and how fast can we get there? Um, and the market really is accelerating dramatically. The other point I make on this slide, which once again is probably a no-brainer, but I'll say it anyway, um, the market is huge. Um, basically, the market last year for everything associated with IT, IT services, um, was estimated by various analysts at about a $3 trillion market. And of that, it was estimated about $2 trillion or two-thirds was about keeping 
the lights on, maintaining the existing infrastructure, maintaining the existing applications. And those really are the target that we're looking at when we're talking to customers about migrations. How do I get my legacy over to the cloud and onto AWS so I can glean and get the benefits from running in the cloud? Now, we don't expect all of that $2 trillion obviously to come over to the public cloud. But even a fairly small percentage of that is still a huge market opportunity for us. And as I said, this is a strategic imperative for our customers because they want the scalability of the cloud. They want the agility to react quickly to um, business events and spin up instances and experiment. They want the ability to significantly reduce their cost. Some organizations want to be able to deploy seamlessly globally. All of those are the strategic imperatives that are driving customers to the cloud and to AWS. And supporting our customers with your help as they migrate over to AWS is a strategic imperative for AWS. One of the major strategic imperatives for us last year and this year, and it will be going into 2018. And the other key point to make on this slide is customers cannot do this on their own, or most customers cannot do this on their own. They need your help. They need the skills and the experience and the expertise of what it takes to move to the cloud, to AWS at speed and scale. And partners are critical to making this happen. Okay, how many of you have seen this slide before? Good number, reasonable number. It doesn't surprise me. This is, we've had this um, way of thinking about the customer to journey um, to the cloud, our customer journey, for the last two or three years. When we started engaging with customers, um, we, we, we realized we needed to have a mental model of how they move to the cloud and how we can support them at each step on the way. And when I say we, I mean not just AWS, but of course everybody in this room as well. And there are four major stages. There's project, foundation, migration, and then reinvention. Project is the early stages, and I'm sure you've all got customers who are doing this. They're kicking the tires, they're doing proof of concepts, they're perhaps spinning up and developing um, standalone applications in the cloud on AWS to see if it works. Once they get a degree of confidence that this stuff actually does what it claims on the label, they start to lay down the foundations for moving most of their business, most of their IT over to the AWS cloud. And that's when they start to migrate over some of their production and more mission critical workloads. And then once they go through that phase, they basically got beginnings of the skills, they understand the significant benefits, and now it's a case in the migration phase of how do I get there and how do I get there quickly. And then finally, the final phase there is, I've got my workloads, my applications on the AWS cloud. I may re have refactored some of those. I may have lifted and shifted some of those. The final phase is, how do I optimize all my applications to get the most benefit out of running on AWS and utilizing all the AWS services. So these are the four stages, and there are migrations happening at every stage. The project phase, the foundation stage, and the migration stage, obviously. And that's really where they happen at speed and at scale. And to support this process, AWS has launched what we call the Migration Acceleration Program, or MAP. This is a major, as I said earlier on, a major strategic initiative for AWS. How many of you in the room, just out of interest, have heard of MAP or the Migration Acceleration? Phew! Thank goodness. When you drive out large programs like this, that's a majority. It's not everybody, but that's a majority. When you drive out large programs like these, you hope they get traction with the target audience. So the Migration Acceleration, which I'm going to talk about on the next slide, is the program that we've put in place this year to help our joint customers make their move to AWS at speed and at scale. So what is MAP? Hopefully a lot of you in this room have already seen these slides, but I will go through them one more time. It's got six, six main components to it. The first is a methodology. When our large customers first started talking to us about what it would take to get to the cloud, they said this was 
a year ago, two years ago, they said, hey, AWS, you're the experts on this, tell us how to do this. And we realized, whilst we were the experts on our own services, we didn't necessarily know in detail what it took to help our customers move over to the cloud. So we've spent a lot of time and effort over the last couple of years developing a very prescriptive methodology, particularly for the planning phase of what it takes to successfully move to the cloud. And that is available to everybody in this room as well. And if you, a lot of people in this room work for companies who've got tremendous experience of migrating customers, just might not be to the AWS, to AWS. If you've got a robust methodology, you do not have to use our methodology. We'll get aligned with you on what it takes to be successful in these migrations, but have at it and use your methodology. Tooling is critical, and Calpan's going to talk about this in a lot more detail in the next couple of slides. The, uh, even today, a lot of the migrations to AWS are heavily manual, require a lot of manual intervention. And we need to reduce the cost, the time frame, and the risk of our joint customers moving to uh, AWS. And tooling is critical, both in the discovery, the planning, and the migration phase. And as I said, Calpan will cover that in more detail. The next two, partners and professional services, are all about the skills that we need to make available to our customers to hold their hand, in fact, to drive the programs as they move to AWS. Because most customers will have not done this before, and they need your support to help them move over to AWS. So that's about the skills and the enablement. The fifth component is training. Both training in terms of migrations for our end customers, but also how to operate and run AWS optimally once they get over there. And then finally, a significant investment component. For most customers, in fact, for every customer, moving over to AWS is going to involve a one-off cost, an investment bubble, as we call it. As they continue to maintain their existing legacy applications, they pay, hopefully, for your services, to migrate them over, and then they start to pay for AWS as they ramp up on that. To help offset that cost, there's a significant investment component as part of MAP as well. And as I said, partners are critical. They're critical in the tooling area, and they're critical in terms of the services and the consulting to help our customers move over. Okay, so that's how we can jointly help our customers migrate over. Now, as most of you in this room probably know, the AWS Partner Network has tens of thousands of partners. In fact, last year in 2016, over 10,000 consulting and technology partners were added to the program. So how do you differentiate yourself? How do you rise up amongst those thousands of partners? So what we have done is we have in the AWS uh, Partner Network team, the APN team, we have developed competencies. And this is a way, how many of you are familiar with the AWS competencies? Okay, good, a majority again. This is a way of you standing out amongst your peers, shall we say, to prove your capabilities in the many different areas of focus. So this could be a vertical focus. You could be, could be a finance expertise you have, or it could be a horizontal focus like security, or it could be managed services. But this is a way of you differentiating yourself from the crowd by demonstrating your capabilities in each one of these competencies. And then we, AWS, work with you to present that information to our joint customers so they can choose from the competency partners to work with them. And if you are a member of the competency, it gives you these benefits. Firstly, you're differentiated because you're in that subset of partners that are within the competency, and then we put in place programs, marketing programs, communication programs to help you differentiate yourself out there in the market. And we work with you under NDA to both in terms of executive briefings, planning sessions, and pre-release information about new services or offerings that are coming around. So those are the benefits of being part of the competency. Under MAP, we will only work with migration competency partners and support your migrations with your customers if you are a MAP, Migration Competency Partner. And here are the list of delivery and consulting partners who are in the competency. 
This is not the technology partners. Calpan's going to talk about that. This is the list of consulting and systems integration partners. There are 35 partners up there, which may seem a large number, but this is global, and this is out of tens of thousands of partners. So there is a lot of visibility here to the end customer who is considering a migration. So I'd recommend, if you're not already part of the competency, go and look at the requirements, the links there in the slides, and uh, determine whether you think it's of value to you to participate in it. And as I said, um, the, mig the Migration Acceleration Program is only open to those partners that are in the competency. But do not despair if you're a partner today that is not in the competency. If you have an opportunity that might qualify for MAP, and you have the capability to to get the competency and you make a commitment to get the competency within a defined period of time then we will work with you as if you were already a migration competency partner right? so do not despair as i said if you don't have the competency today but i would recommend going and looking at that and figuring out the benefits to you of participating okay that's a background on the program and the competency and the benefits of being part of that I'm now going to focus in, or Calpen is going to focus in on the tooling component of working with our customers on migrations. Thank you. Thanks, Andy. Any questions for Andy before we uh, delve deeper into the tooling and ISV partners? So uh, I'm going to focus on the partner tools. Uh, I'll start with uh, what we have in the partner ecosystem in the APN competency with uh, migration tooling partners in, under the different categories. Uh, I will also talk about how the AWS partner team is trying to simplify customers' ability to procure and consume and use these tools in a, in a different way. Uh, we'll also talk about what kind of support uh, we can offer to our customers and partners to help them, one, to identify right tools uh, and, and able to, to procure those tools from different uh, channels such as marketplace uh, and how we are constantly going to innovate with our ISV partners over the next uh, few years. Uh, so starting with one of the subcategories under the migration is the discovery and planning. This is the early stage uh, where customers would want to discover what's in their data center or what's underneath the application workload. Uh, what this delivers is two things. One is this discovery and planning uh, phase helps them identify what are the target workloads to, uh, and applications, help them plan better as to which workloads or applications, applications should be migrated first, second, and third in, in, in terms of waves uh, by uh, our partner tools uh, helping them identify those dependencies uh, between the applications and the database and, and such. Um, the planning of, of this is, is uh, also helping them identify what's the business case, uh, what's the total cost of ownership, if they would migrate a uh, select set of workload or the whole of the data center. Uh, so starting with very sort of rapid discovery and, and you know, identifying where is my business case, what are the low hanging fruits, where should I start? Uh, these uh, partners, these technology partners have done tremendous job of automating the process of you know, discovering what's in the data center, what's a dependency, how should I think about planning, and what's my business case. So uh, there are different partner capabilities around, uh, and, and, and different partners do different job at uh, making sure they have uh, deeper discovery versus they've got a, uh, a handle on the TCO. And, and there's a lot of automation and, and a lot of work that these discovery players are doing up front to help customers get ready for, for the migrations. The next phase, uh, logical phase of migration is moving the workloads, whether it's a physical or virtual infrastructure uh, application workload, how should they be thinking about automating the workload mobility? And there, there are players around here uh, in this slide who have, again, built a fair amount of automation to help successfully migrate the workloads with l very low uh, downtime or, or lower dependency on errors or humans uh, and and fair bit of automation around uh, how should the customer be thinking about the target environment uh, such as you know uh, uh, what kind of AWS instances would be the target uh, landing zone for, for that matter under their application 
the third set uh, here and uh, the, towards the end of the migration, there are players such as APM, uh, performance monitoring tools, who come handy in identifying what's the application performance before, during, and after the, the migration. This kind of helps set the, you know, a, a sort of a approach to acceptance testing uh, in terms of what's the application performance, SLA, um, and matrix before, during, and after, and, and New Relic and, and players such as, or, or no, you, you see our partners on the slide, have a phenomenal job of innovating with us for our customers. Uh, so again, this is the process of simplifying the migration process. This is the core uh, of the tool chain, if you will, and a uh, couple of challenges um, that, that we have seen in last year or so with our customers as we started working with them is, well, how do I identify what's the right tool for my situation? Uh, what tool will help me do this successfully without a whole lot of heavy lifting or effort and time? Uh, so we have uh, been able to capture this information, one, across the migration categories. So, so far, until the last slide, we were looking at these as a different uh, piece of a puzzle. And we, we thought, as, as a partner team, that there is, there is a way to simplify this uh, for, by helping customers identify the right set of tools and simplify the way they consume while they are doing, going through the migration. I am um, going to uh, talk about this slide in a, in, a, in a way that the whole process of identifying the tools across the tool chain and the ability to work with those tools seamlessly through the process of migration end to end has been categorized you know, in different buckets starting with doing an inventory of, of the data center or application uh, landscape, uh, building a business case, a very detailed business case about what if I migrate this workload or this data center, what am I gonna potentially save? Uh, by looking at uh, things such as, how do I match make this instance here on-prem with its equivalent on AWS? So a lot of deep work uh, goes on into the pre-migration phase uh, and, then, uh, and then customers start getting ready for the migration and, and build a planning that's, that's when they need to understand the dependencies between different databases, different applications, and different workloads. And here is where they have to map it to a level where they are sure what's the, their to be environment, to be architecture, or a, for a better landing zone look like. This is a stage from where customers really ready for, for, and they have built their migration plan, a detailed migration plan where they, where they know what's gonna happen with them over the next six, 12, or 18 months, and what, how is the migration process gonna flow through the tool chain. And the next phase, the logical phase, is to really work on that migration piece, which is workload move, data move. Uh, I, I did mention uh, about, uh, I did not mention about another category, uh, and that, that's what we have come up with is data and database migration. And Attunities is listed there, uh, which is uh, doing the job of helping our customers do the data, database migrations. Uh, we also see uh, AWS tools, such as ADS, Application Discovery Service, in the first phase of migration. In the second one, we see uh, application, uh, application Discovery again, and uh, the other two capabilities at the end which is server migration service and database migration service. And these are all native services that are part of AWS uh, services platform. I did not mention, but the last one is the validation where a new relic of Dynamics and Dynatrace uh, plays a key role in helping customers validate the, cust the migration has been successful and, and are, able, are able to visualize and the performance of the application, the SLA levels and, and such. Uh, to be able to accept uh, the migration successful. Simplifying further, uh, what sort of information we could provide upfront to our customers so they know what is the right set of tool that we should consider for my business case or this situation. And, and there are a few uh, sets of questions that I've listed here in an example, and we have collected information in the form of sort of a card or a battle card where you have answered these questions by, from all of our migration competency ISV tooling partners. We also have a list of capabilities that we think our customers would need 
to, from these tooling vendors or their, their products or services and, and listed them as responses to what tools are capable of doing what. So this is an information they, that we would want to provide upfront to our customers if they would want to identify the tools themselves and, and match make with what's their business use case uh, versus what the tooling vendors do and what's their capability th capabilities that we have assessed and certified. Further simplifying the ability to consume uh, these uh, partner tools, ISV tools or services, uh, we have created a mechanism in our marketplace where customers can go in and start using the tools in a real time. And, and there are some private listing and custom transaction capabilities that we have built uh, with the help of our marketplace team by which we can build a customer situation or partner situation specific program or contract which can then go through a, a marketplace transaction. So customers actually using three or five different tools to do the migration process, but they're gonna access those tools by click of a button in, in, a, in a two days time. Once we have either identify the tools for the customer uh, or customer uh, knows what they're doing, we will help them through these transactions to be able to leverage these tools in a one click from AWS Marketplace. Uh, again, this is a process of how we want to simplify customer's ability to identify, access, and procure these tools in a real time. Before I go to the, some of the customer examples, any questions so far on the simplification of tooling ecosystem, um, identification of tools, uh, its capabilities, uh, ability to consume and run uh, and procure these, these tools? Questions? So some of these uh, tooling vendors have already built those uh, APIs, but I want to talk a little bit about something that's not in this slide deck, but an AWS native service called Migration Hub. Um, and, and Hub was launched at New York Summit uh, August, uh, earlier August this year. Um, the theme, uh, the idea with, with the Migration Hub is uh, the hub actually acts as a as a point where customer gets to use the choice of their tool uh, as well as use that tool through the tool chain with the information passed back and forth. Uh, so think of it, going back to the tool chain slide uh, for a second, uh, a customer thinks of using tool X, uh, let's pick up on risk networks uh, to do their discovery. They may want to tool them, uh, use another tool to do the application dependency map from the second bucket, and they may want to use, let's say, AWS DMS to do the database migration. The migration hub allows them to do all of that through the hub access, number one. The data between these phases of migration will be able, will be able to exchange via that API method you just talked about. Uh, and we've launched it with, uh, with a couple of partners in New York Summit, we are launching uh, more and more partners as we go forward in uh, later in 2018. So that's one job of Migration Hub, but the other um, is to provide a, a, a clear visibility to customer on a real time as to what are the workloads that have migrated already and what's in the progress, work in progress, and what's uh, the, the pipeline, what's pending work. So, it's both visibility in terms of where am I in terms of my migrations and how soon can I realize the benefit of migration, but also being able to exchange the data and information across the tool stages or, or waves, uh, migration phases, if you will. Um, the only information I have, uh, which is public so far till date is that, that database migration service by itself uh, was used to migrate north of 20,000 workloads. And, and more to come uh, as, we, as we get more 
more information. More questions uh, before we talk about, uh, yes. Hey, is that a feature comparison question or a price comparison? Uh, we don't. Uh, we, would, we would let it be either a problem. So thank you for asking that. And one of the problem that Andy mentioned earlier is, is about the helping our customers reduce the cost of migration. Like he said, it's one time, uh, but it's a cost hump. So the job of the pro partner team here and ecosystem team here is to identify those uh, areas where we can help customers reduce the, the cost of migration bump. And we do it in a, in a different ways creatively with different partners. Uh, but the, the workload mobility uh, as a whole uh, is a cost of migration problem, if you will. And, and what we are doing, how we are helping customers is ab their ability to consume and procure these licenses as part of our program. Uh, so think of it ideally that if you are a system integration partner and if you're working with a customer on a migration project, uh, you would have understanding of scope by which you will get a whole lot of data and information from the, from the cards that I mentioned uh, in terms of what partner's capability and once you've identified it, we will help you go through a private listing transaction which is uh, much better co cost to the customer in terms of cost of migration. So we're trying to simplify that process as we, as we speak and it's, it's part of the problem. Cost of migration is a part of the problem. More questions? Should we move forward? Great. So I want to um, call out on what is the customer success um, and what's, uh, what happened during 2017 with our ISV partners. And, and these are some of the examples of referenceable case studies from our partners who have done a phenomenal job of working on one or the other phase of migration, helping customers move to the next stage and, and, and uh, accelerating that momentum of migration. Uh, so first is the example from Risk Networks. Uh, is the Risk team here? Is Zane and team right here? Thank you guys for great work this year. Um, so uh, this is an Eastman uh, chemical example where uh, I was also partially engaged and uh, I, I, we learned uh, from a lot from this experience and we help customer um, build a migration plan for uh, their 300 plus applications, uh, about 1500 plus servers uh, under the discovery and we identified the dependency groups as to uh, what application group goes in first and second and third and such. Uh, we also mapped um, and then helped customer reduce the cost uh, and estimated that upfront. So the business case part or TCO part of the uh, migration uh, readiness uh, came, came in um, about 70% 70, 70 plus based on the analysis. Um, and we've also been able to identify some of the issues that the customer may foresee and uh, expected uh, as to how do we remediate th those issues uh, going forward from this study on. Another example, uh, Risk Networks, uh, one of our customers, Turner, have uh, uh, used their capability to, to discover 10,000 plus servers, and, and uh, they've identified, they've used uh, about 1,000 plus servers uh, who were to be, which were to be decommissioned. So we understand how effective the discovery process is uh, in, in early on identifying the workloads that are going to be retiring. Uh, you would not need more than 9,000 servers or equivalent to that. Uh, what happens during the dis these discoveries is really customers uh, are able to understand a particular size of a server in an on-prem environment uh, based off of 30 or 60 or 90 day utilization of these boxes, either, whether it's a computer or storage or such you will get to know what is the ideal match uh, when it goes to, to the AWS. And, and that's the beauty of you know, building this business cases up front, uh, working with customers, uh, identify what's the potential for them to build on and, and, and migrate the workloads to, the, to AWS. 
uh, you see that significant uh, amount of savings that, that the customer discovers way up front in the migration process, doing the discovery and planning. TSO logic, is Aaron around here? Thank you, Aaron and team. Uh, again, great work uh, in helping build a really deep financial business case uh, that the CFOs and, and the financial team is gonna expect from a large migration initiative. Uh, and here's an example uh, that TSO worked with us and uh, our customer, uh, Morningstar, uh, identifying a number of workloads, you know, they're north of 11,000 operating system uh, and app servers and database servers that we have discovered from the customer's data center. Uh, a lot of insight based upon the algorithm that TSO has built, uniquely built to help customers identify those compute and storage and, and the patterns such as if I'm utilizing this infrastructure which sits under, underneath application workload X, uh, if it gets to AWS, what am I gonna save right on the day one? So this is a very important insight which we wanna communicate to the customers together, us and our partners together to help them understand using their information, their utilization, their current infrastructure and costs, what's the potential benefit if they start the migration journey? And that's where uh, we, we observe from this customer about 30% plus savings overall. And this exercise takes no more than a couple of weeks uh, running this uh, and, and helping customer identify where is the starting point? Where do we go from a business case standpoint? Um, and, and this case, case study is available on, on TSO's website as well. Uh, Cloudomize, um, not sure if Pushbu and, and team is here, but uh, again, uh, fantastic work with one of the largest financial services client. Um, we have seen them helping them reduce the, the time to identify how do I move this workload, what's the dependency, how do I cut over from stage A to B, and, and, and how does it or, uh, look like over a period of 12 to 18 months. About 1,600 servers and 500 plus applications under the scope. Um, and, and again, um, zero performance and connection issues uh, while the execution happened. So Cloudomize does not even just discover uh, the on-premises workload, um, but they also on an ongoing basis help customer manage the workload performances. And then that's the whole migration uh, risk gets reduced if you have that level of visibility in terms of performance, in terms of uptime, and, and the whole migration uh, execution as the customers go through the transformation. A uh, couple examples from our another uh, discovery partner, uh, Cox Automotive, uh, and we see a migrations of not only tens of thousands of virtual machines, uh, but uh, thousands of terabytes of data uh, that moved over and, and uh, that was identified early on from different environments. And in, in some situations, discovery has to happen across the data centers. And, and, and many times we have observed uh, the partner's uh, capa tool capability is very handy in finding out what's going on across the multiple data centers and have a clear view of where am I going with this data center or this uh, particular country. And, and again, it helps customer leverage the multiple availability zones and multiple data centers uh, that AWS has around the world. Uh, some more work uh, by Cloud Health. Uh, again, uh, tons of you know, VMs and petabytes of data uh, moving in. Um, and and you know, some of the customer quotes uh, really give, uh, give us uh, indication that, that migrations are, are scaling. Um, and they're, uh, like Andy said, that's the question is how fast can we go there? And, and these partners have the answer to that question. Cloud Endure, do we have Gonan here? Thank you so much, uh, Gonan, again. Uh, fantastic work, and what I like about Cloud Endure is uh, you see those four bullets, and one of the key one is absolutely no downtime. Customer could expect to run the workload as they migrate seamlessly uh, and then some don't even feel that workloads have moved. Uh, and that's, that's, the, that's the automation, that's the capability that Cloud Endure has, has built and worked with uh, many of our customers 
This is a very good example uh, where customers moved their 26 applications, you know, number of workloads and servers underneath, uh, identified how easily, uh, ideally, in a click of a button, can workload can move seamlessly into AWS. Uh, fantastic work there. Um, and, and this this is the, the early on work that's building on as customers, like Andy, in Andy's slide, we saw the project phase and then building a foundation. And this is the kind of work that customer gets uh, in front of and, and gets a lot of confidence. And they believe that this is gonna happen and it's not gonna be uh, as risky as we thought about uh, using this ISP tooling. Cloud Vlux, um, not sure if anybody's here, but um, amazing amount of work with our customers. Um, in the retail sector, um, they have done uh, migration of 450 plus servers uh, with Brook Brothers, uh, one of the very old ready-to-wear ready -to retailer. Um, and and the whole uh, you know strength here uh, with this migration tooling is is the capability to do it uh, in a highly automated fashion. So uh, you not only save time to migrate, but also because of the less time and less of a human uh, intervention. We also avoid, avoid a lot of risks with respect to um, migration itself and, and making it more and more successful as we build. I think there is a question. So uh, I want to quote a, a general percentage that 90% plus of this work has been done by the SIs. Uh, as far as helping the customer is concerned, the SIs are key, and I think Andy, Andy has presented, um, and, and we believe that uh, that SIs are gonna help customers through the journey, uh, when by having to use and help deploy these tools and, and get the best out, outcome of that and delivering those projects successfully and, and helping customer manage that uh, in a longer period of time. So we see here uh, customer references, uh, a few more uh, uh, before we, we all get to the next um, discussion. Uh, I want to quote this example, uh, very strategic customers of ours and about Cloud Velox um, doing uh, migration of uh, their 22 global data centers. Significant amount of CapEx reduction and increase in efficiencies. Uh, Cloud Velox has been key to uh, help this customer uh, and, and help this with this migration process successfully. Um, uh, there are 5,000 plus servers that are moving as we speak uh, with Cloud Velox at PTC. PTC is also our very strategic partner, uh, but this is a very marquee customer and partners of ours uh, have been building a significant benefit uh, for the customers. Attunity, uh, a very unique partner of ours, you know, focused on uh, data and database migrations. Uh, pretty deep expertise around uh, data replication and, and helping customers, again, move the data seamlessly, accurately, uh, a very large size of data. You know, if you see in this example, customers um, consolidating their insight and building their insight platform, uh, University of Maryland at a college. Um, and they're not only, you know, doing the transformation in terms of how they look at the single source of truth across their learning management, student information, and the CRM and financial systems. Uh, Attunity has been able to provide that, uh, that ability to uh, bring that data and database uh, and migration and, and doing that seamlessly uh, from our on-prem to AWS. A um, couple more examples. Uh, Lee's Hawk, uh, they're in the, in the business of uh, you know, apartment industry and they get phone calls and they route it to the right uh, agents and, and they have moved their uh, entire data, uh, data database into AWS. Um, earlier they were um, uh, expecting about, uh, you know, downtime of 12 to 15 hours, which just got reduced into seconds. And this is the, this is the ability that our customers need uh, because at times, running the production system on premises is, is, is just doing okay. And when, when we think about migrating, you wanna make sure there's a minimal amount of downtime, whether it's about moving the workloads uh, in virtual machines or moving the data. And, and 
Acuna is doing a fantastic job using their Cloud Bean solution. Um, New Relic, um, is Abner or Maya here? There you go, thank you so much. Um, and, and I wanna quote uh, something unique that, that New Relic has been uh, helping us build for our customers uh, where they got a single pane of dashboard to identify how is the each application workload performing prior to migration, how is it performing while migration is going on, and how is it performing post-migration. Not only knowing how it does and how do you achieve that uh, service levels and matrix, but also helping them quickly identify the issue if there is. Uh, whether it's an application level issue or the infrastructure, it is important to keep, a, keep a, an access and having visibility around what's happening across this pane. And amazing job uh, with uh, multiple of our customers. Uh, quick one here is the script networks. Um, customers uh, average uh, Installed delivery time was four to six weeks, as you can see, a significant um, achievement. Now it takes 15 to 20 minutes. From four to six weeks to 15 to uh, 20 minutes. Again, this is where I'm going that we need to help customer through this journey by optimizing on, on their downtime, on their risk, on their ability to know what's going on uh, as the migration happens. And, and New Relic is, is built, you know, uh, very good capability. Another, you know, extremely good example, Marky brand uh, with Dunkin' Donuts app, uh, the mobile app. And, and uh, you know about Dunkin' Donuts, uh, but uh, they were looking at uh, the legacy architecture. So this is a classic migration example of while the customer's migrating into AWS, they're going through a transformation, which is in the form of changing the arc the, the product or the, the solution architecture, fundamentally. And it's key that how we look at migration in a, in a different lens, such as, you know, rehost, uh, such as, you know, lift and shift, uh, but also the customer's ability to do replat, uh, re-architecture. Um, added data here has a unique capability while they do assessment of all the on-premises uh, workload, they can also help customers up level the Windows version. So you're not only migrating, but you are going, going one version plus on your operating system. And, and it's an upgrade and migration together. So uh, another unique capability that they have built and that, that is in need for, for customers to leverage. REI, um, very good examples where customers started with uh, thinking of building their DevOps structure, uh, but ended up doing a lot of migration through the process. Key uh, metric here is, is a reduction in um, production incidents and performance on the mobile app. Dynatrace, um, good example with SailPoint. It's a cloud-based identity management software company, uh, which is now 100% built on AWS, running on AWS but New Relic helped them successfully do the migration. Um, and, and, and now customers are all in and, and successfully running and leveraging a lot of benefits of cloud, such as not just cost, but in operational excellence. Ability to focus more on their customers uh, while the, the, the operating environment and the, and the data center is running optimally. Ability to scale up, scale down as they need and pay only for, for what they use and such. So very good example, and last one here is AppDynamics um, with a customer uh, known to everybody, NASDAQ, and they have been able to accelerate the UAT, the process of accepting uh, the migration successfully is, is key, and then New Relic, uh, sorry, AppDynamics has done a phenomenal job with um, NASDAQ, helping them achieve shorter UAT cycle. And, and create the sort of next generation DevOps environment as they go. Before we go to the takeaway slides, I want to take any questions. Uh, pause here, any questions here? Good. Uh, key takeaways from today's discussion. Um, you know, early on, Andy talked about migration has been a huge opportunity for us and, and our partners. 
and we want to leverage that. Our partners are leading the way in capitalizing this. We have seen a few examples, but you can imagine these are all referenceable, and the amount of work that has happened uh, over the last 12 months or so is, is significantly large uh, in terms of numbers of servers. Number You would have seen you know, tens of thousands of workloads migrate just in these reference cases. Um, and they're they done successfully, and customers are, are leveraging that uh, as we speak. And, and talking about migration technology partners, they have been innovating with us as we simplify the, the process of migration, and we real, help customers realize the benefit of cloud migration. Um, cust we have seen examples at the end from every single segment of the industry, from media to telcos to you know, financial services to retail and such and technology, uh, and every segment, every size of the, of the companies, you know, from startup level to mid-size to the large enterprise uh, are, are leveraging cloud migration and, and getting benefits out of that. And every single pattern, if you will, uh, of migrations, uh, have, we have seen those in, in the examples, such as just re-host, lift and shift, or re-platform, or re-architect. So, the, the message here is that migrations are happening at a very large scale. A lot of customers are adopting to it. Our partners are key. They're driving this uh, for our customers. And um, I would let last slide talk about how do you get access to the resources, the ecosystem, the tooling, the ability to procure uh, these uh, ISV tools seamlessly from our system, from our marketing, uh, sorry, marketplace is um, an email, uh, aws underscore partner underscore migration underscore team at amazon.com. Uh, we will help with tool selection to the customers and partners. Uh, we will help them with the sizing and pricing information. Uh, there was a question earlier on about it um, with two to three days of uh, SLA. Uh, and and we, will get, we want to get all this information alongside with a lot of knowledge we gathered early on from our experiences with hundreds of those customers. Uh, our goal with that is to help with help new set of customers leverage those learnings and best practices so they do not have to reinvent, we are reinvent. Um, yeah, and, it, and, and those, if you're interested in the migration acceleration program or we also have a partner migration program and the competency, the competency you can see on our partner website for the programs, there is a website up there, but I suggest you reach out to your local partner team, your PDM, if you're partner development manager, you've got one, and they should be able to help you in the early stages of both the program and obviously the competency as well. Thanks. And um, so we want to leverage these capabilities, this platform, this foundation that we have built in 2017 to help many, many customers together uh, 2018, and, and look forward to hearing from you guys. Uh, any questions that I can take this time? If not, then I have some more. Okay, Abner. I, I'll talk about it from a program perspective. Calpan can add that, and also he can then go more specifically tooling. So in 2000, where are we now, 17? 2015, we started working for, with some very large customers who were pretty mature in AWS about what it would take to move to AWS, and we, we worked with them last year, some very large names. And our starting assumption was, well, these are pretty sophisticated customers, both on AWS and generally in how they run their businesses. And so one of our um, assumptions was that we would come in, give them TCO information, total cost of ownership information, and they'd plug that into an existing business case and we'd be off and running. Interestingly enough, hardly any of the customers we worked with had a business case, well, firstly had a business case, and secondly, that those did have a business case, it was not compelling enough to get the support of senior management within their organizations. These tend to be large, business transformation projects, not just technology projects. And you need the buy-in from executive management, both in, obviously for budget, but also to commit the resources. And that was a huge eye-opener to us. So we spent a lot of time 
ourselves and working with partners. And that's why I was going to make that point when Calpan was talking about TSO logic and such like. The business case is critical. And I think we totally underestimated that in, in, the, in the first place. We, we really did. Um, I think that was the one key lesson. Obviously, a methodology and the tooling and things like that. But getting a rock solid business case that gets the commitment from the executive manager, nothing happens beyond that. And it's a lot more than TCO. And if you've not been to one of the business case sessions that we've had here, I would highly recommend you go because that is, that is critical. And that frees up everything else to move the, the, the migration first forward. And it's defined in terms of business objectives for the end customer. What are the benefits? Because that keeps things going through the tough times because you know where you're going to get. Key message, I think, for us that we've learned. Thank you, Andy. Um, what, what I thought, um, and one of my key responsibility was to help our SI partners um, be, be known to the different migration uh, methodologies that we have learned and built. And uh, what, what we thought is, they they're up to speed and and we just need to help them a little bit to know more about aws uh primarily the practitioner part of it you know helping them learn aws uh, technical skills and uh, they probably got it uh, but a lot of partners came back to us saying wait a minute uh, we need to learn what's aws's prescription uh, what do they prescribe as, as they want us to help our customers together and we in fact ran um Every month we ran a, a bunch of boot camps in different cities around the world uh, to help these SIs learn what we got learning from those early customers. Very large projects, very complex, but, uh, but a bunch of lessons, bunch of best practices, tools, uh, and made that open source. So today, uh, at the end of this year, we would have trained about uh, 600 or 700 partner consultants on AWS methodologies, which takes them pretty deep into every single element of how to get customer ready. Uh, and there are eight work streams that runs for two to three months with some of the large engagements. Um, and it goes from security and, and compliance to building the customer's cloud center of excellence to how do they figure out the application portfolio discovery and plan to how should I think about building a landing zone? What kind of, uh, you know, what kind of security um, posture should I adopt to? What are my options? How should I think about uh, identity and access management? How should I be thinking about um, VPC versus direct connect access and, and then whatnot? How should I be thinking about a specific workload such as SAP, uh, Info, Tipco, Informatica, which is running seamlessly on premises. How should I be thinking about those unique workloads, lifting and shifting or building uh, and transforming it into a SaaS version of their product, such as you know, Informatica has got their SaaS, Atlassian has got their SaaS. Uh, and as the customers think about migrating, not only just the traditional applications, but all of these workloads, it is critical that we build a program uh, number of resources such as playbook, uh, which helps them go through those stages and those steps that we have learned and some of the best practices as to how do we adopt, how do we do that quickly, and the tooling uh, that comes along as to how do we do this to use which tool, and, and if I have to achieve why, what, what tools do I use and such. So a comprehensive uh, sort of methodology has been developed and it's, it's named Migration Readiness and Planning. Uh, it's 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 a loads of knowledge that we are open sourcing to our SI partners. We have been training them over the last one year or so, and we'll continue to build on uh, and make it scalable to to reach to tens of thousands of consulting partners. Any uh, other questions before we uh, go to the last request to help you remember complete your evaluations? They score us separately. In that or is it one evaluation? Um, we need to innovate that model. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Yeah, we thanks a lot for the time. Appreciate it.